The T42 from GeForce is one of those bikes where you get more than what you paid for. In my experience, it rides and feels more like a bike for around $2,000 rather than one for $1,299. So let's dive in, starting off with the speed test. Well, let me start with level one and see how fast I can get on all three speed modes. For pedal assist one, I got 15 miles per hour. Pedal assist two, 20. And pedal assist three, 28 miles per hour. One shy of the rating of 29. Now, 28 miles per hour is the fastest bike in this price range, beating other brands by more than 5 miles per hour. The T42 comes with a 500 watt brushless motor in the rear wheel, powered by a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery that can be removed and takes 6 to 8 hours for a recharge. The bike is one of the lighter bikes in this price range of 58 pounds and can carry a rider up to 300. Now I wanted to see how fast that power could carry my 185 pounds in an acceleration test on both pedal assist 3 and straight throttle. Now the get up and go for both pedal assist and throttle is neck and neck and has the fastest acceleration in this price range, taking just over 16 seconds to top the bike out. Now this is the range test. I should be able to get 35 to 50 miles. I do have it on pedal assist level 3, full battery, start workouts. Here we go. Here's everything I liked and didn't like about the T42. It feels and rides the exact same as the other brands that look just like this. These collapsible fat tire bikes are becoming very popular and it's hard to think of new things to say about the design because they all look the same and you're led to believe that companies just slap a new label on the side of the same bike from the same manufacturer. But I don't think that's always the case. There are tweaks made here and there, not so much in looks, rather performance. For example, the T42 is $700 less than a bike I reviewed a month ago that looks identical, yet this one has a higher speed and quicker acceleration. Now this has one of the louder motors. When I'm going flat out, that motor is humming at me. The speed does come with the trade-off. The bike is quite loud, but it feels solid and well-built. There aren't any vibrations or noises where the frame folds, which has been the case with a couple other brands. Pedal assist is about average for a bike in this price range. When I'm flat out and I stop pedaling, it takes about a second for the power to kick off, which is one of the longer delays I've seen. And then when I begin to pedal, it's about two to three revolutions before the power kicks back on. Now the throttle is on the left side, and that's the first I've seen on uh, these types of bikes. And the power matches the pedal assist level. And I'm not a big fan of that. I prefer full power whenever you hit the throttle, but uh, this one isn't like that. Now the throttle is a cheaper filling plastic. I'm not sure why they did that because everything else on the handlebars feels nice. With so many bikes that look and feel the same, it's the small things that make the difference. That being said, the brake levers feel higher quality and cut the motor off as soon as they're pressed. The seven speed Shimano shifters are fast and locking quick and easy. Going down a gear to just one push. Coming back up is one at a time. The seat is a little hard for my taste and would recommend some padded shorts for longer rides. And the shocks are something that you would expect for a bike in this price range. They lock and adjust, and I had them set for uh, rough terrain. Now you're definitely not going to want to take this on like super rocky terrain. The 20 by 4 inch punch resistant all-terrain tires also do well in the sand and gravel. I was going slow for filming, but when the camera was off, I was hitting 25 miles per hour coming down the canyon. When the battery died, I ended up with 17.70 miles, and a good portion of that was on a dirt road. Now that is quite a bit lower than the rating, but that seems to be the case with every bike I review because I test the range with the most energy consumption. That being said, 17.70 miles has the highest range out of any bike for this price and with the most elevation gain of 1,037 feet. So when it's all put together, almost 80 miles is a pretty good range. The T42 is rated to climb a hill up to a 20% grade and has a motor that produces 80 newton meters of torque. I'm back to my favorite hill in the area. This is around 20% grade, about two blocks long. I've got a full battery, pedal assist three, speed up open. Let's see how well it does. Really starting to climb here, going eight miles an hour. I am in the lowest gear and I'm getting some pretty good resistance. Bike's doing most of the work though. Starting to come over the top, 10, 11, and we're there. Eight miles per hour seems slow for a hill, but for that hill, it's actually really good. And I felt it could even go steeper, maybe up to around 25%. The T42 comes with dual hydraulic brakes. I tested them out going down the same hill I just came up. 
Gonna hit about 22, 23 miles per hour, slam them pretty good and see how well they do. Yeah, they stop you quick, smooth, and quiet. There was, uh, there's very little squeaking, so very nice brakes. Next, let me run you through the LCD screen and control pad. There's a power button on the front. Hold that down for a couple seconds. Screen turns on, and that displays battery life, odometer, speed mode, trip odometer. On the side, there's two buttons here. One is the lights. The bike comes with a very bright and nice looking 48 volt light, and there's no light in the rear, just a reflector. The other one toggles between different settings, like your trip odometer, total odometer, max speed, average speed, amp hours. There's a plus and minus. That, of course, is the pedal assist, one, two, and three. To enter the advanced settings, hold down the plus and minus. And then in here, you can change like the screen brightness, reset the trip odometer. Um, there's information online on how to change each one of those settings. And that's a pretty easy to navigate system. The GeForce T42 electric bike has an IPX4 rating, which means it's protected against splashing from any direction. A one year warranty, a 14 day return policy, and comes 95% assembled. Its frame is designed to fit a rider 5'3 up to 6'5, and folds up small enough to fit into the back seat of most cars. Now it also comes with two mud flaps that I didn't add because I don't like the look, but they are easy to install. Overall, if you're around my weight of 185 pounds and ride the bike hard, here's what you can expect. A top speed of 28 miles per hour on both pedal assist three and straight throttle. A fast and quick acceleration, the best so far in this price range. It also has the best range with 17.70 miles when the bike is flat out and with over a thousand feet in elevation gain. Hill climbing is very good at tackling a 20% slope at eight miles per hour through the toughest part. And the hydraulic brakes are powerful, smooth, and quiet. Now I've got no problem recommending this bike. It did very well for the price. I think you guys would be happy with it. I've got the link in the description if you wanna pick it up. Also check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and take care.